Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez teamed up once again to declare climate change a national emergency that demands a, quote, national, social, industrial, and economic mobilization of the resources and labor of the United States in order to restore the climate for future generations. Now, this comes about a day or two after Donald Trump gave an entire speech about the environment and environmental issues and mentioned climate change a total number of zero times. Imagine that. The president talks about environmentalism, completely omits climate change. How absurd is the timeline that we're living in? We have this existential threat that could lead to the planet becoming uninhabitable for not just humans, but all types of species, and the president doesn't even address it. So what they're doing here is they're saying, look, this is step number one. What we are getting people to agree on is the fact that climate change poses a national emergency threat to the country. It's simple. It's not controversial. It's not even debatable. So if we can establish that climate change is a national emergency threat, then it logically follows that we need to take action in order to mitigate said national emergency threat. And there's already a number of lawmakers, to their credit, that signed on to this. We have Cory Booker and uh, Kirsten Gillibrand and all the usual progressives in the House that signed on to AOC's companion piece. But the fact that not everyone, like not 100% of lawmakers, have signed on to this, it shows that we still don't have our priorities in order. Because this isn't even saying we're going to do X about climate change. It's just establishing the fact that this poses a national emergency threat. It's easy. But still, there are a number of lawmakers, in fact, quite a bit of lawmakers, that aren't signing on to this for some reason. So now here's where the grassroots comes in, because they're putting pressure on lawmakers. Because if you can't even agree that climate change is a national emergency, what use are you to the American people? This is easy. This is easy. It's like saying the sky is blue or the earth is a sphere. If you can't admit that climate change is a national emergency, just retire. We have no use for you. And I think that a lot of people are agreeing with that same sentiment, hence why there's grassroots pressure now to get people to sign on to this. Now, as Jake Johnson of Common Dreams explains, after Senator Bernie Sanders and Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on Tuesday introduced the resolution declaring the climate crisis a national emergency, grassroots environmental groups pressured members of Congress to back the declaration and heed its call for transformative action. Instead of remaining complicit in worsening the effects of climate change, members of Congress in both the the House and Senate must respond to this resolution with the urgency and support that this moment demands, said climate group Extinction Rebellion, which is holding a rally in Washington, D.C. Tuesday evening to urge lawmakers to sign on to the emergency declaration. Today, we stand in solidarity with tens of millions of people from around the world in calling for a mass mobilization of our social and economic resources, Ocasio-Cortez said in a statement. Working to solve the climate crisis will create tens of millions of union jobs, empower communities, and improve the quality of life for people across the globe. So, it's not controversial. 100% of people in power should sign on to this without hesitation, but they're not. So it's not controversial, but if we had to speculate about why this could be hypothetically controversial, I think you and I both see why it could potentially be viewed as controversial. Because if you declare something a national emergency threat, the implication is, well, that threat should be followed by action. And there's so many shills of the fossil fuel industry that don't want to take action. And we all know that the Republican Party has been bought off by the fossil fuel industry. But there's a lot of donations that go to Democrats as well from the fossil fuel industry. And even if they may still pay lip service to the idea that we should take action, you know, when it comes to climate change, those donations from fossil fuel giants, that encourages them to demobilize and not talk as much about climate change so they effectively align with Republicans to not take action. This isn't me saying this or speculating. This is backed up by uh, political science studies. So, you know, um, campaign contributions, they often get funneled to both sides of the aisle. 
to people who will actively fight for them and people who will deactivate and not fight against them. So we've got to call out everyone and this is a really important litmus test. Watch out for who does and doesn't sign on to this because if they don't sign on to something so simple that just declares climate change an emergency, a national security emergency, they don't give a shit about you. They don't give a shit about you. So this is a great lit litmus test. And it's important because it's just, like I said, it's step one. We declare that it's a national emergency. We're not saying we're going to take X, Y, and Z actions in order to address said emergency. We're just saying it's an emergency. It's that simple. This isn't hard. It's not controversial. But when you have a Congress that is that corrupt, then, you know, even things that are not debatable become controversial, which is sad. So good on Bernie and AOC because they're getting people in Congress to reveal their cards. Are you with us or against us? Whoever doesn't sign on to this clearly doesn't have your best interest. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.